my co-moderator and the rest of the panel uh, introduce themselves. Yes, uh, my name is Jörg Hausalter. I'm from Munich, from Germany. I'm also an interventional cardiologist, mainly working on mitral and tricuspid diseases. Okay, our facilitator, please. Um, Sergio Berti, I am an interventional cardiologist from Italy. Okay, our panelists, please. Yeah, I'm David Marti. I'm a professor of cardiology in Madrid, and I am an adult interventional cardiology, mainly focused on travel. Oh, is this my cello? I'm retired professor of the University of Jena, but I'm a co-founder and inventor of Jena Valve, Oclotec, Trick Valve. Now I'm doing some new company, Davy. Okay. Please. Uh, My name is Wolfgang Schiller. I'm at the University of Mainz. I'm cardiac surgeon there, and my specialty is my uh, minimally invasive mitral surgery and interventional valve. Uh, implantations. Great, thank you very much. Very much. Now we're going to go to Argentina. Uh, Dr. Marcelo Riverola and team, we are ready for the live case if they're ready for us. Buenos Aires, are you here? We are in the Good afternoon. hospital. Can you hear can, us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. okay. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, we are so happy to to be with you in CSI meeting. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, we are in the Hospital Universitario Austral in Buenos Aires. Um, let me introduce the the team here. Uh, um, by my side is Victoria Lucini, my co-work in the, in the, in the local uh, city, uh, uh, Francisco Garay from, from Chile, uh, that is uh, my co-work uh, for LATAM, and the uh, rest of the team, uh, Ricardo Costantini, the adult cardiologist, and uh, the technician and nurse, um, uh, Cynthia, and <laughs> Janina, yes. no, our uh, anesthesiologist is uh, Rodolfo Sardini. Yes, and um, the team the, the, that okay. is, is, uh, is, uh, is making a, a video, the Scroma, and we, we, we will present the case uh, and the slides, uh, the fellow Agustin Chosos. Okay, let's go with the, with the, with the, case. With the presentation. Okay, next one. I'm going to present our case. It's a 17 years old male patient, weight in uh, 54 kilograms, with diagnosis of the trilocity of a lot with transannular patch. Next. The history of his present illness is he has diagnosis of the trilogy of a lot with Corizard variety and hypoplastic pulmonary arteries. At three months of age, he received his first surgery, the right BT shunt. At five months of age, he uh, underwent in a balloon angioplasty of the right pulmonary artery. At two years old, he had a second surgery, a left BT shunt. And at least at four years old, he received his corrective surgery with a transannular patch. At the long-term follow-up, he undercame with severe pulmonary regurgitation. At 13 years old, a right pulmonary artery stenting with a CP stent, an 8.6 CP stent uh, of 39 millimeters over a balloon in balloon uh, with uh, 12 uh, millimeters of diameter. At 15 years old, he had a red dilatation of the stent with a seed med balloon of 15 millimeters of diameter. And 16 years old, he still with hypoplastic right pulmonary artery, severe pulmonary regurgitation, and a severe right ventricular uh, dilation. Next. 
In his clinical examination, he's quite asymptomatic, good tolerance to exercise. He's in functional class one of the New York Heart Has a Association, and he received no medications. Next. His electrocardiogram shows a sinus ring with a right branch uh, block and a QRS in 145 milliseconds. Next. The MRI shows, as we see, a front and a profile. Next. The sizer in the, in the MRI, the right ventricle has a uh, volume indexed by, by the weight, uh, 156 millimeters meter square, with a sectional fraction of 43%. The left ventricle, it's okay. That's Next, we went to the cath and coronary test. We see a front and a right uh, RAO projections, we, where you can see the, the stent previously inserted and the regurgitation. Next. One more in profile and a sizing balloon. Next. We can see no coronary complications and the sizing. Next. As treatment, we propose a pulmonary valve implantation with a venous vitae valve. Okay. okay. Thank so you. Thank you, Agustin. Uh, you, you, you saw the I case. Um, ask a question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us here are adult uh, cardiologists. So in terms of uh, when to decide to intervene, uh, the uh, RV and diastolic volume is almost double of the LV. So is that sort of too late, too early? Uh, when do you intervene? Why would you wait until the RV dilates that much? Uh, I, I don't know how, how is the, the reference in the adult cardiology world. Usually for, for pulmonic valve replacement, we use the information from, from several places, from That's Children right. Boston, by, by example, that says that uh, a right ventricle volume higher than 150 ml over square meter is an indication, one of the indications for, for pulmonary valve replacement. And of course, the, the larger the valve, the right ventricle dilation, uh, the less chances to recover volume or, or function. So uh, 150 is usually a, a cut point for, for pulmonary valve indication. If you are okay with, with that, uh, we will continue to show you the angiograms that we did today to this morning here okay. in advance in the case. Marcelo. Let's go, the first, the first angio. This oh. is the are, are you seeing the angiograms, guys? You see? Um, maybe I didn't yeah. understand it uh, correctly. Uh, my, my question is, this patient didn't receive any wealth, uh, so th the pulmonary wealth was just stented, so to keep it open with a regurgitant flow, why didn't he receive any melody wealth or so? Is that right? Or was it just stented to not to have a stenosis? This patient has no, no stenosis. Stenosis. There's Severe. no grade there's no gradient between R V and P A. No gradient at all. So the indication is not because of stenosis, the indication for the replacement is for regurgitation. That's why the, the yeah, volume no, indexes no. are Why important. in the previous uh, operations it was just standard and why it didn't uh, get any wealth like melody or so? Uh, the, the stent was in the right pulmonary artery. Yeah, yeah, this oh, patient yeah. has yeah, not see. stented so, in the RVOT. The stent you saw in the image is a RPA stent. This is a small stent, 15 millimeter diameter stent. The surgery that has in the RVOT is a transsanguinal patch. Hopefully, you can see the angiograms in your s on the screen. Are you seeing this? You can see the yes. images. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We will comment on that. Go. Okay. The the, the first one, please. Okay. This is the the first and one. Is the is um is a crania front crania view. Yeah. You see, uh, the st the the stents and the right pulmonary artery. There is no gradient uh, uh, between left pulmonary artery and the pulmonary trunk. 
uh, the pressure is 20, 26 uh, by zero, and there is a little big gradient, the eight millimeters uh, between right pulmonary artery uh, and, uh, and the pulmonary trunk. And there is no gradient with the pulmonary trunk and the, and the RB. Okay? You see that the, the pulmonary trunk is, is, uh, is like a tube, and let's, uh, the, the net, this is the um, obliqua view. RAO. Uh, RAO, yes. Uh, you can see this is the, the tubular trunk is uh, very nice. And uh, the next one, this is the lateral view. Uh, you can see the, the pulmonary trunk is uh, like a tube. Okay. And very next. dilated MPA, you know? Yes. Ah, oh, the, the next one. This is, uh, we, we did uh, the stop flow with the elastomeric balloon. This is the Oclutec 35 balloon. You can see uh, the, the waist, the next one. In front, the next one. This is the IO. And we did the coronary uh, arteriography. And you can see that there is no compression. The next one. And you see the lateral view. And you can see the, the waist in the middle, and, this, uh, and there is no compression of the left coronary artery. The next one. Okay, let, let's go to the, to, to, to the, to the, to the dimensions. Yeah. How big How is the big balloon? Is the balloon? This 35. Is, yes, Oclutec it's says Oclutec elastomeric balloon uh, 35. Yeah, we will show you the measurements. There you go. Yeah. This is, you can see the, the, the waist is 25, and, and under or upper that waist is 29 or 28, yeah? Lens one. Okay, this is in front view. You can see 27, 29, next one. This, one. this is a RAO. You can see that the waist is 25 and up and down uh, 24 and 28. Yeah. You see. Okay. Uh, so uh, according to that, to those measurements, we decided to implant a uh, 29 millimeters diameter Venus Vitae valve, which is a balloon expandable valve. We will show that right now. Go with the valve and then show okay. the. Okay. I will show you the the valve for you guys. Can, see that. can you go can we can see that. Trim, you go here. Give me, give me that. Uh, so, if I may ask a question before. Yeah, yeah. With this valve, do you still put a CP as a platform before you implant the valve? Okay, okay, I, I will answer that, that question. Or you, or you in a, in Let me show you the valve so you can understand the situation. Hopefully you can see my hands. This is the Vitae Venus valve. It's a balloon expandable valve. It's a cobalt chromium stent, very short, because this valve origi originally was intended to be implanted in aortic position. Just, just like other uh, balloon expandable aortic valves uh, that has a good result in aortic position, then it's possible to try this kind of valves in pulmonic position. So this aortic valve we, that has been used in aortic position, we, will, we have been trying this in pulmonic position in the last several months, and that's the, the procedure we will do right now. The, you can see the, the short uh, valve with a cobalt chromium stent with a skirt in the proximal part to avoid the paravalval leak. And inside of this, you can see uh, three leaflets, pericardium, porcine pericardium valve. And you will see uh, some of the features of this valve in, in, in a moment. This valve could be implanted by itself in a native uh, right ventricle outflow tract could be implanted uh, in a RV, RV to PA conduit, any, any kind, or could be implanted uh, over a previously stented RVOT. So 
all the chances. For this one, uh, I think that we, since we have a waist of 25 millimeters, a 29 millimeters valve will get a very enough stability. Um, three features of this valve. First, this valve comes with a dry tissue technology. So, um, if I don't know if you have seen those dry, dry tissue technologies. The valve comes in an envelope, no, not in a jar. Um, the potential benefits of this could be the, the storage benefit, uh, the durability, and the of course those benefits need needs to be proved. And the other thing that you will s we will show you now uh, a feature, a particular feature that is named uh, locking wire mechanism that consists in a in a wire that goes in the outside of the valve and it holds the valve in position and makes the valve impossible to displace over the balloon. We will show you that right now. And the last is the, the valve goes covered all the time into the pulmonic position to so the risk of to damage the tricuspid valve when you advance on a non-covered valve uh, does not exist. We will move into the table right now and I will show you Hopefully we will have a close-up in the valve. The valve is already crimped over the balloon, but hopefully you can see over the valve. Uh, can you show trim? We kind of see wire? it. Ah. Yeah. The, the, the valve is crimped over the balloon, and trim, our engineer, will show you the locking wire that goes over the valve. That is a mechanism, mechanism that uh, prevent for the valve to displace and move away over the balloon. Now the valve continue the crimping procedure and you will see how the valve uh, is introduced inside of the capsule of, the, of this delivery system. Does anyone have anyone questions have question? for the team yeah. here? In the meantime, you see the valve already. Uh, just a quick question, too. Do you do CT planning for uh, this procedure, or no? You use just the balloon to size, in terms of looking at calcium in the conduit, or just a geography? No, no, no. Uh, usually, uh, in a difference to RPA conduits or the aortic valve, native RVOT like this one are not usually calcified. Um, they are usually very elastic with a high pulsatility. And uh, that's why the, the other model for percutaneous valve replacement is a self-expanding valve. But uh, as we will do right now, uh, it's possible to implant a balloon expandable valve in native uh, RVOT. So the, the, the One valve- One question. Is question. Can, I, can I just ask what French size is the um, delivery system for the valve? The valve is inside of this 23 French uh, delivery system. The 23, the 23 French is the size of the capsule. Of course, the rest of the, the delivery catheter is 16, I think, 16 French chief. So we are ready to move into the table. Marcelo okay. will show you what we have done okay. to prepare the... Yes. The advancing let's of this. Show the the so the, let's go the, back to the the angel, the, the fluoroscopy. Okay. Okay. Good. Mostrame la sangio, que es donde subimos la vaina. Mostrame la la vaina. Marcelo will. Yes. This. Uh, are this there one? any reports of migration? migration with this technology? Any reports of migration since there's no calcium, or the upsizing is enough for stability? Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the risk of migration is a concern. Uh, when you do a balloon expanding valve in this native RVOT, uh, we, mm -hmm. we count that the oversizing over the waste that we demonstrate will be enough to, to, to give enough, enough stability for the valve. It's over, ex over expanding over that valve. Mm -hmm. 
over that weight. Okay. Uh, you can see that uh, we uh, we advanced the 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 long sheet that is 24 sheets from from Venus, uh, call it axis is uh, 20 25 centimeters long. You can see the next one. This is 75 centimeters length. Yes, 75. Long sheet. Yeah. That is from Venus as well. It's a hydrophilic sheet. That's why you saw it goes very next easily one? all the way into the RVUT. Next one, the approximate one, please. Okay. Uh, uh, and quiz and and yes, this is a yeah. lander quiz yeah. in the right pulmonary. We yeah. put uh, a cape facings. And how many uh, time do we have, guys? Well, well. Okay. You usually okay. deploy under rapid pacing. Is it? Or yes. Uh, yes, or yes. Uh, maybe in pulmonary positions, maybe it's not necessary, but yes, uh, this is a recommendation uh, for, for this valve. You see, yeah. I am bouncing. You can see my, my hands here. Unlock. Yeah. yeah. And this uh, one. Again, what is the maximum estimated diameter of your implant now? 29. 29.7. We are planning to. Uh, this is our maximum diameter we are intending to, to implant okay. the valve. Okay. okay. Now we are in a higher position with the delivery catheter. We will pull back the axis long sheath. Yeah. Now the valve is uncovered. Okay. And we will. Well, let's go to the lateral view. We will do a fine adjustment for the position. We have contrast. Can you also comment, also comment on the risk of vascular rupture, on the pulmonary artery vascular rupture? Well, the, the, that is a good question. You have like 20% oversizing, correct? I don't know. I, don't, I, I thought you were asking about the rupture or damage in the, in the vascular access. But in the RVOT, the risk of rupture in these elastic uh, uh, structures are very very and extremely unusual. I have never heard actually that a native RVUT can get ruptured. Different situation if you have an RV to PA conduit. Mm -hmm. Different because the okay. RV to PA conduit usually are 20. severely calcified and the risk of rupture, that is a real issue. That is a real problem. 20. Um, That's why so in terms in of position, RV2PA conduit, every time you dilate, you, know you have exactly to check. exactly where to position it. Uh, here, okay. 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 Just very I difficult for me, for us to see, right, is, uh, in terms of where you position? intend to position where the indentation was. Marcelo, what, what do you think, Marcelo? Yes, I think uh, we are in the right position. If you see the ancho, please, pasala, pasala. You can see it. You can see the, the, this is the, 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 the level of the, of the annulus, of the pulmonary annulus. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. In the, the indentation, the right? What's what the yes, the yeah. indentation. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's, it's about less than a quarter, uh, probably, of the okay. length of this Facing? Facing. No, ah, primero 120. Sí. That is a good position, right, guys? Yes, you can we show the, 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 the pressure, the line pressures, the el monitor. Poquito más. 180. Okay. We, we, we will do pacing. 180. Okay. That's okay. 180 yeah. per minute is the pacing. Okay. Ready to okay. go, okay. Marcelo? Let's Preparate go. para hacer angio. No, no. Voy. Dale. Okay, go. Go, go, go. go. More, 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 more. Okay, all the way, all the way, all the way. Then one, two, three, four, Ora. and deflate. Unlock in the wire. Deflate. Looks very large. Okay. okay. Deflate. 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 A centimeter. Show, show, no, show yes. please. We control the volume. Like we yes. do in it, covers. It was volume control, just like in, in the aortic scenario. Take a look on Flora. Okay. That's Valve okay. looks in the position we wish. 
and Wait, so far algo? looks stable yeah. enough. Sí. Mira que no le dito el volumen. Now Marcelo is retrieving the delivery catheter. Yeah. Prepare the 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 big tail. Very gentle, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a good one. Yeah. Good. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, is there significant for shortening this uh, device? Does it for shorten significantly, or it's predictable based on the oversizing? Uh, you know, the, the for shortening is not significant. I, I, I will ask the engineer for a more specific number for you, but as you can see, it's not a significant. What is the final? Uh, so, is it normal to see that walking motion? Is that the normal length, for the this sort of, of valve? The RVOT or the pulmonary valve? It looks kind no, of rocking. That is usual. You know, that is not rocking. It's only the. Remember, this is a, this is a native RVOT, a native main pulmonary artery. Okay. So, okay. this has okay. a highly pulsatility right. behavior. It's very different to a conduit or very different to a calcified valvular annulus. But uh, we will do an angiogram above the valve and let's see. Let's see, guys. So far, hemodynamic is good. Let me go over there. Are we okay with the time, guys? Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, t time is fine. Um, yeah. We what can is the go across to after the CVC, implants? I think, um, uh, at any point. So, uh, angiogram, hemodynamics done, that's fine. I mean, for the long term. Okay, we, we, you saw Marcelo advance a pigtail catheter over yeah. the wire in a higher position above the valve. Okay. We will do right. an angiogram now. Oh, it has a lot of regurgitation more than I expected. Mm. I think we maybe need, I think, mm. let me see this, but maybe we need to over Oversize, dilate maybe. a little more. That's okay. Teníamos el volume. So the question, that's why I was asking about uh, how, lo how long the skirt or as if the skirt is a little bit too lower than the uh, waist, right? Then you could, it's very difficult really to, to judge that. That What is the mechanism here? Is it undersizing or is it skirt height being lower than the annulus? If with uh, enough stability, there are uh, not enough uh, opposition into the posterior wall, as you can see. Uh, similar to what would be a, a paravalvar leak. So um, we will post dilate this a little more and see if that helps to the, to the regurgitation. What kind, what kind of balloon do you use for the post dilatation? We are looking for what do we have here and let you know. Uh, 30, 60 crystal balloon. We have a 30 millimeter crystal balloon. 30 millimeters yes. by 60 in length. Length crystal balloon. So we are going L a millimeter higher than the original uh, diameter of the valve. The reason is that, of course, we want to produce uh, valve insufficiency on the inside of the stent. We will let these guys work. What do you need? Uh, uh, so, so I think that goes into the, into the sizing of these valves, right, compared to the aorta, because here we size based on the smallest, right, to say we're going to oversize compared to 25, we use 29. But the CT may show that the vessel is actually bigger than 29 because we're relying on the balloon, not a CT sizing. Could that be an issue that we're undersizing? because we're using angiography compared to CT? Um, you know, for pulmonic valve indication, ma mainly in native RVUT, uh, 
we rely on this sizing balloon interrogation of the of the vessel of the MPA because it's the only way to to know how elastic or how restriction there are areas and that's why it's important to demonstrate waste okay. um, this is not a calcified fixed structure so NGCT is usually not uh, the way we we do B because of the reason of the elasticity of this structure. Um, so we rely that the waste that we demonstrated would be enough to to seal the RVOT. Uh, of course, is it was not. We will try to fix that by over dilating this okay. a little more. Sin. Sin. And see. 120. So how far could you dilate this valve beyond the nominal size of 29? Nominal size of 29. We will go 30, maybe a little more. I know that the company does not recommend this post dilatation in this kind of valves, but it's the only way we have to to fix this situation so far. Afuera. Any comments from? Audience here, experts in congenital heart disease. I don't know if somebody in the in the audience or in the panel has experience with uh, balloon expandable valves uh, in in native MPAs. You, the usual patient is patients with a tetralogy of fallow repaired with a transcellular patch like this one. That is the usual scenario. So Marcelo already. This is dilatation. El electro. Hemodynamic is good. He, he we go with, he so go again if, if with if the 30 this millimeters. If doesn't function now, will you implant another valve uh, more distally uh, with the skirt in the nearest position? If I understand, you're Can asking if. You, if uh, the the skirt is not enough to okay. seal the the wall and it's necessary to implant uh, another valve okay. in a slightly distal position could be sounds reasonable let's see if we made a difference with this post dilatation cuánto fue la angiografía que hiciste Marcelo Okay. No, 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 no. So, the, of course, this is not the the result that we were looking for, but at least the the valve looks in a stable position. There's always uh, the chance to implant uh, to dilate this a little more, and if if the valve is not competent, do a kind of a valve in valve in and try to fix this. I think that could be a plan B or plan C. That's okay. It's okay? okay? We will do an angiogram again. Go. Nice. Looks way looks much better. better. Nice. Very look nice. Difficult, better. The valve looks yeah. competent. There's no huh? regurgitation more than a trivial, maybe. Um, so, how much volume did you add to the balloon for post dilatation? This last inflation was pressure guided. Yes. Or uh, or no? seven, uh, fifteen. At seven atmospheres. Yes, five, five, and seven. seven. We inflate five, with an insufflator and reach five atmosphere. That is near. Yes, this is a classic balloon, a crystal balloon from Balt Company. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, we will take a look in, on Echo anyway, uh, to be sure that it's no regurgitation depending on the valve, and there is no uh, paravalvar leak. Um, so, so far, we are happy with the result. This is a, we think that this is a nice valve for all the features I commented, the dry tissue technology, the, the, 
the locking wire mechanism that is a safety mechanism. Um, the company, according to the company, he ha they are saying that this is a new concept that in they are Holy trying points. to include the valve, the long sheath, the balloon, and even even the stent. Uh, we did we did not demonstrate a uh, previous pre stent in here, but they have a stent. So. Uh, all of it could be included in the, in the same package, and that is the philosophy of the company. Okay. Can you comment so on the anticoagulation or antiplatelet therapy in this patient? How is yeah. the patient treated yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually use uh, antiplatelet treatment yeah. with aspirin, uh, five uh, milligrams per kilogram, or ten th uh, one th one hundred milligrams yeah. per day. Yes, this is uh, our protocol. So um, you don't use anticoagulation. You don't use Doax or Coumadin. Just aspirin on Plavix. Sorry. Usually aspirin is the only aspirin. Usually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Uh, uh, if you can see that, I think it's a very nice, very nice valve. Uh, you know that uh, this is the this is the the the, the first valve implantation. Uh, of the venous vitae in this condition because the uh, the the valve uh, is uh, is is coming with the old packaging include the clamper the uh, the long sheath and the delivery systems and everything is in the same packaging you know that this is the the, the first one no okay um you know uh, uh, uh have we more time uh, to, to do some, some uh, acknowledgement? Any, any other comment oh. or question, guys? Would you prefer is the, is the valve would be a little bit longer? <laughs> so to, uh, to the, to, to, for more easy positioning? Could be, Could be. why not? Um, th th those are the valves that are available <coughs> so far. Uh, thinking in balloon expandable valves, the only a little longer valve than this is Melody, but the largest Melody size is 22. So those are not suitable for this kind of anatomy. When you try to implant a, a balloon expandable valve, you have to go into the aortic valves, percutaneous aortic valves world, and all of those are very short valves. Yes. And uh, the reason to use a short valve in this patient uh, was not to interfere with the distal RPA stent, because we have experience with self-expanding valves in patients yeah. with previously stented branches, and uh, of course, of course, it's possible to do. But uh, on the other hand, the, the self-expanding valves are larger. Are, I mean, are longer than these ones. So. Sometimes the, the balloon, sometimes the self-expanding valves could uh, get entangled or interfere with a previously stented PA branch. That was, that was the reason why we look for a shorter valve. And this is the, sh the valves, the shorter balloon expandable valves that are available so far. Okay, um, Marcello and Francesco, thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Congratulations to this excellent result. Um, and we need to move on now for the next, next live case, which will be coming here from Frankfurt. A big applause to you and Buenos Iris. And Horst, we have you live here on the screen. The audio at the start of the case. So Horst, we're waiting for this exciting, challenging case.